It all began here with leading Muslim and Jewish parliamentarians discussing the challenges of relations between their two communities. They agreed that Jews and Muslims in Britain have shared values and shared histories, but both minorities have faced difficulties when integrating into British mainstream society. When Jewish immigrants arrived en masse a hundred years ago, there were few laws to protect them. Today's Muslims are faced with similar cultural and religious issues. International leaders such as Prince Hassan of Jordan and Britain's Lord Janna were gravely concerned and so they formed the Coexistence Trust. Its intention is to promote dialogue and good relations between Muslim and Jewish communities worldwide. In the UK, Lord Mitchell and Baroness Varsi conceived of the first ever cross-party initiative to discuss these issues on university campuses where there have been problems. By focusing on domestic issues and not the Middle East, the first coexistence tour aimed to create a dialogue where none had existed before. We would like you to be our witness to what happened. The first tour visited the London School of Economics and universities of Birmingham, Leeds, Cambridge and Oxford. There have been issues on, on campuses but between Jews and um, Muslims and I think it's something that has to concern us all. I think we have to take some responsibility. We welcome the Coexistence Trust to Oxford. We're pleased to be hosting the debate. We think it's good for groups to talk to one another and that's why we're very delighted to have them with us today. We believe that we can play a very impactful role in community cohesion in this country by bringing students closer together. Parliamentarians were able to meet a few Jewish and Muslim students behind the scenes in an atmosphere of hospitality and friendship in preparation of the main event. There were concerns. Would there be antagonism? What would happen if there was trouble? Would there be progress? Each event attracted more people than expected. Everyone was warmly welcomed by the director of the trust. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And then parliamentarians made it clear that their intentions were serious and realistic. I'm sick of interfaith work where it's all happy clappy, very soft, how we all love, you know, you eat kosher, you eat halal and all of that stuff and we're all the same of the Abrahamic faiths. I said it's all been done before. And what we need to do is really start dealing with some real practical issues that we're facing in Britain today. And then the dialogue started apace from students and panellists alike. Yes, chap over there. What do you advise us to do? Because at the moment, we don't know. The question I'd like to ask the panel is, um, doesn't this damage the credibility of the organisation? As a British policymaker, how do we start putting things right and making sure we get the right policy for cohesion in the future? What are specific tools that will enable that process to succeed? How can we raise the profile that interfaith is happening and is working? What are you putting back into the communities that you live and work in? How have we suddenly become demons? Most importantly, it was the students who were encouraged to speak both to the panel and to each other. There's a question, point there. Where do you see the future of multiculturalism going? Killing innocent people is not Islam. Committing suicide is not Islam. Panelists and students responded to the diverse points made. Some were appreciated and others less so. I think I have slightly dissenting view on this perhaps. I'm getting quite angry actually by two of the comments I've heard today. You have to stand up to these things and fight your corner. I think in my heart I feel against faith schools. And opposite to that actually, I'm uh, hugely supportive of faith schools. The fact that you're prepared to, um, on certain issues, be critical of this country, that's, that's absolutely, but it's a free country. You're perfectly entitled to do that. So how do we deal with this sort of issue? Our leaders need to be far more tolerant. The religious leaders have got to start by being inclusive within their own communities before they can get together and be reaching out to each other. Do we have that chance to become leaders in our world? The answer is women, women, women. <laughs> women are the dividing issue in the religion. I'd love some Muslim and Jewish women to get together and bear their souls. There was an unexpectedly large range of issues that participants could grapple with. Assimilation, integration and being British were major issues at each university. You must become, to some extent, part of 
the vision of where that society is going. You join a, a nation and its ways. If you have other loyalties that you put first over and above the loyalties that you have to this country, then it does become difficult. I don't think in Britain we tell people what to wear. And, and I think that is a good thing and that's what makes us the, the people that we are. I do see the BNP as a threat, uh, the far right as a threat uh, to both uh, Muslims uh, and Jews and, and people of colour. Uh, the other day I was talking to one of my friends and they didn't know what kosher was. On kosher meat and halal meat, uh, there was a real issue. I'm extremely worried about Sharia law. That does not in any way seek to supersede or override the law of the country, which must always be supreme. Opinions and questions led on to plenty of practical and realistic suggestions. But we need to have a common front on things like days when you cannot take exams, um, days that are bad days for freshers' fairs, food, accommodation, those sort of practical things that make it all possible for us to live on a residential campus. Go into synagogues if you're a Muslim. Go into mosques if you're a Jew and see that these are not places of anything else but the meditation of God. If every one of us here just managed to make a friend, um, go out for coffee and go to a party or whatever it might be, with someone from a different religion, that in itself would be a start. The Coexistence Trust would like to offer the possibility of internships to those who are interested with the offices of some of our participating peers. Good night and thank you very much indeed. The open forum events were a tremendous success unto themselves. But what happened afterwards was equally impressive. It was better than I expected. Um, in some ways, so much more unites us than divides us. And in other ways, there are problems that I thought had been overcome, but have not. So I thought it was really a very significant meeting. The questions were searching and they were quite thoughtful. And indeed thought-provoking, and that's what we wanted. Organisers had spent months putting the first campus tour together. There were people and institutions who had not welcomed the tour and the panellists reflected on this. I'm a Muslim. I would not be here supporting the Trust if I had any doubts as to the openness and, and the goodness in this enterprise. To those who think there is no hope, well, they are just wrong. They are ignorant. They don't know the situation. They haven't worked as we have done across the areas of, of common ground. This is not about brainwashing somebody to thinking one thing is right. This is about understanding overall that all of us need to live together. At least be curious about us. If not, be prepared to engage. Please come along. Please come and listen to the discussion. You might learn something. You might be infused by what you hear. We hope that a, a higher level of interaction and friendship and understanding and of the people from the religions in the universities getting closer together and, and, and working together against Islamophobia and anti-Semitism and racism. I sincerely hope that we can learn from some of the lessons that we're learning from, from this tour, and take it forward and make it much more successful when it's rolled out. We've now been to five universities. This is the last one, Oxford, and every single event we've been to has been packed. We've had enthusiastic students there, and people really wanting to hear the message that we're putting out. Clearly, Muslim-Jewish relations are a live issue on university campuses. The great thing about having done it is, first of all, seeing the interchange between people, but actually the request that has come from people that we have met here saying, please come back. And also, we have been contact contacted by other universities who have said to us, when are you going to come to us? And if that's not an endorsement, I don't know what is. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can talk to us. They come up, they talk to us, they tell us they disagree with us. Um, you know, they tell us, they ask for our phone numbers because they're going to look us up when they come to London. They get e I've had emails back, feedback, in terms of emails. I mean, I was astonished. Some universities invited students to meet after the main event. The newly invigorated interaction was illuminating. But I detect from both groups, people do want to sort of get together and, and have some degree of interchange. Students had shared a common experience in the main theatres. They were now able to reflect on this together backstage. You know, as 
the general consensus yeah. consensus of, no, of like, what and, like, Muslims are like on like this because we're not all like that. There's so many similarities, and I think they outweigh the differences.